It's Brave New World from Iron Maiden. We're here in London with the band, Bruce. Did the momentum coming off the short tour that you did get you fired up to go in and record this album? Did that get the band smoking together? Yes, and also uh, we were aware that, you know, what we were letting ourselves in for right from when we got back together because we uh, started writing the album back in March of last year and we, we had all the songs together and we'd gone through them a few times but not enough to be confident, certainly not enough to sort of go out and play them live, uh, but enough to have a version committed onto just a little cassette recorder or something from the rehearsal rooms. And uh, we left it like that, and we didn't touch those songs until after the tour. We, then, we went and we played the old stuff, and we got under the skin of how to, how to play, you know, the Maiden stuff, and I think we played some of the best Maiden concerts, if not the best Maiden concerts ever. And it got to the end of the tour. Normally at the end of the tour, or certainly in the 80s, I was always like, oh, wow, I just I need some time off. You know, I'm tired. I mean, at the end of the Ed Hunter tour, I was like, wow, I wish this could carry on for another month. I'm like, I'm really having a blast, you know. And it stopped. And suddenly we were back to rediscovering all these songs. The only reason that we were playing live every day and rehearsing was to do the songs for the album so we we just went in there with the same spirit that we had been on stage and rehearsed the songs and played them live every single day we just went through every song every day live like it was a gig and then we packed up the equipment and two days later we walked in the studio and the day we started in the studio we put uh, wicker man down mm. same day I was actually doing something, I, I, I was about 800 miles away, and I called up because they said the, the drums went in at 11 o'clock in the morning, and then the guitarist was supposed to go in about 5 o'clock, you know, and, and normally, you know, you spend a, a day, a couple of days getting a drum sound, and then you fool around with the guitars for a day, and then third or fourth day, you know, something goes down, and... Well, I did I call up, say, are the, are the drums in? And the guy goes, oh, yeah, yeah, the drums sound great. Yeah, they're just fixing the guitars up now and we'll be ready to go in about three hours. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> first day, you know. So I got there about eight o'clock that evening, walked in the studio, and Kevin turns around and goes, hey, they're ready for a take. You want to do it? I'm like, uh, yeah, let me go check my vocal, vocal mic, you know. I said, you know, hey, one, two, three, hey, it sounds great. Wow, let's go, you know. It was like that. We're talking about the Ed Hunter tour, and that was significant not only because it was the return of you and Adrian in the band, but it was the first time anybody saw Iron Maiden with three guitarists. I'm wondering how that works out live, and also when you recorded the record, divvying up the parts and how they all worked it out. Divvying up the parts is the easiest thing because we really have nothing to do with it. The guitarists figure it all out amongst themselves. You know, We call them the three amigos. And they uh, they just go into a little huddle in the corner and figure it all out, you know. No fisticuffs during that? Oh, God, no. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, th this is not... Um, honestly, if you were to try and assemble one troublesome ego out of all three guitarists, you couldn't do it. They cooperate, you know. It's great. Well, let's hear all three guitarists and the new lineup of Iron Maiden with this live version of Wicker Man recorded earlier at the rehearsal studios here in London. <laughs> 